Lawrence Kaipachi with the weekly Pele report for September 29th of the year 2021. I'm out here in uh, the westernmost point of Europe, Sagras. Uh, it's uh, a little windy, <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can really do this. But the moon is in Cancer and she's moving along by Friday. She's going to be in Leo. Sunday moving through Virgo until finally next Tuesday coming into Libra. We're not going to have the new moon until next Wednesday. So she's in her closing, waning phase from three quarter to balsamic, closing this uh, lunar cycle that began a good three weeks ago, right? And of course, that new moon will be in the sign of Libra. It will be conjunct the Sun and Mars because the Sun and Mars is just, uh, they're going together here for quite some time and they're coming into an opposition with Chiron over there in the sign of Aries. So I'm going to be talking to you a lot about the Sun conjunct Mars opposite Chiron. At the same time, we know that Mercury is going retrograde and is going to return back to square Pluto. Moving pretty slow, so that square is going to be lasting today, tomorrow, Friday. You know, it's going to be really, uh, really something else. And then, um, that's a, the exact same time, Friday, that Mars is opposite Chiron. And the moon is opposite Saturn. <laughs> so, yikes. <laughs> uh, you know, we got it happening here. I want to see if I can get, get you some uh, get you some of these waves. But, yeah, I'm going to go right into the wind. Darn it. So, Mar uh, Mars is going along and Venus is up there in Scorpio. And she is also moving along and coming into a square uh, with Jupiter. And that will be exact tomorrow. So uh, we do have uh, these few aspects. Uh, the personal planets, really, you know, the, the Sun, Venus, Mercury, Mars, all making these aspects with, uh, you know, the, the outer planets of Pluto and Chiron, Jupiter. Very, look at that, look at that, look at that. <laughs> yeah, baby. Forget the aspects, man. Just check out the waves. <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> that's, you know, that's probably good enough. Uh, that's really what I'm going to be talking about today. These are just uh, pretty good times. Let me. All right, everybody. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> First of all, I, I keep forgetting this week's song. Last week was all along the Watchtower. You can go back and check that uh, clip. Uh, it's, uh, it wasn't the original, it was a new one. But this, this week, uh, it is the harder they come, the harder they fall. One and all. Jimmy Cliff, I'm on the cliff here. And we are all, all in, all of us are in some way, shape and form on the cliff, overhanging, looking at, you know, a possible future where we need to jump. <laughs> so let's talk about it. Chiron, the wounded healer, very powerful, discovered in 1977. Okay, uh, it is, uh, you know, more of an asteroid than a planet, but still extremely strong and powerful. And it has a very elliptical orbit, unlike Mars, Jupiter, Saturn that just go around the sun and the sun is the center. Chiron comes in inside the orbit of Saturn on its closest approach to the sun. And then it goes out, outside the orbit of Uranus. So it takes 51 years. For those of you who are 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, you're really feeling this Chiron in Aries energy. 
because right now, as Chiron transits Aries, it's farthest away from the sun, outside the orbit of Uranus, going as slowly through the zodiac as it ever does. It spends a longer time in the sign of Aries than any place else in any of the other signs. The wind is going to blow my freaking phone over. <laughs> oh man. It's already cracked from the last time I dropped it. And then as it comes in closer, 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 it spends like two to three years in Virgo, two years in Libra, three years in Scorpio, you know, and then it slows, slows, goes farther away, farther away, slows down seven years in Pisces, like eight in Aries, seven in Taurus, six in Gemini. So we've got this kind of energy here. And of course, we know with astrology, there's no accidents. Everything is significant. Every little thing has meaning and purpose as part of this grand matrix and this hologram and this law of one that we are in. So to me, this kind of reflects the story of the whole wounded healer of Chiron, the centaur, in Greek mythology is like super powerful. I, I do whole weekend workshops, so I'm going to try to like squeeze a lot in here. But it's, you know, it's coming through, it's at like 11, 12, 13 degrees, you know, of the sign of Aries. And what we say is the wound becomes the medicine. So it's a healing crisis. So what is a healing crisis in the sign of Aries? Ruled by Mars, the warrior, the first sign of the zodiac in the natural zodiac. And it comes out of Pisces, this collective unconscious. Out of that collective unconscious comes an impulse an evolutionary desire, a need that spontaneously arises within the soul. It is the urge to become. I am, says Aries. This is before thought, before feeling, before, you know, <laughs> it's just fire. It's just boom. I am. Ah, ram. Pioneer, start, initiate. It's this masculine force. The yang, the phallus, that wants to penetrate the future, life, reality, the world on every level. So it's very, it's this very powerful instinctual aspect of each of us. Yes? Male, female, trans, bi, whatever. We all have a Mars. We all have a yang energy. We all have a masculine, you know, nature that seeks to act, be, do, initiate, take, want, desire. Well, we can see that through the age of Pisces and probably before and whatever, you know, these last thousands of years and maybe even now, that will force, that powerful, autonomous, independent I am has been wounded through the patriarchy, through external authorities, through kings and dictators and laws and rules and cultures and religions and all these kind of judgments and boundaries and oh my goodness gracious you know now it's like you're selfish if you want something <laughs> you know i mean it's like uh, you know and we're we're going through this transition right this age of aquarius this awakening we're letting go of this piscean you know, following and humbling and bowing, you know, down in devotion and, and just kind of, you know, taking what we can get. Pisces is the sign of the martyr and the victim. 
and we're emerging out of martyr and victim and we need to like discover right you know our power that's what the mantra is about this week because we have the Sun and Mars over here in Libra you know really boom you know this opposition let's look at that opposition we first need to declare our power our truth our sovereignty within our intimate personal relationships but then also within society at large like I spoke of last week we're, we're kind of in this energetic energy here for another few years Chiron came into Aries around 2017 18 it's gonna stay there till 25 26 so we're right in the middle of these lessons we're right in the middle of this healing crisis <laughs> we're right in the middle of discovering investigating researching understanding our masculine energy which is our sexual energy which is our willpower which is our instinct to be and to express and to start so now we've got this Sun Mars over there in Libra and of course the Sun and Mars are both these fire planets now this is what's different if you are born with Mars in Libra okay your Mars in Libra expresses your masculine nature which is more empathic softer you know listening you know being about other people wanting relationship and 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 really you know being a mediator and able to you know put yourself in other people's shoes and other people's places that's that's you know that that is the energy of when you're born with Mars in Libra transiting Mars in Libra when Mars is going through the seventh house or if you do astro cartography you know and you and your Mars is on the descendant this is masculine sometimes anger powerful energy coming at you from the outside from the other from the world uh, you know, and, and so Libra in the seventh house can also have to do with open enemies it's just the other how I how I project how I see how you know what comes at me from the outside world so right now we have the Sun is like on the outside Mars is on the outside and they're coming at us and it and and so we have this Chiron it's like they're shining a light on our wound and we can want to numb out escape avoid deny hide bury our heads in the sand <laughs> you know just like ah you know you're too much you know you know like I, I can't you know, I can't handle it leave me alone or give me space or help or as we heal that wound we stand in our warrior we stand in our truth we are not intimidated we do not run and hide or beg okay you know Aries this Mars warrior energy is the shield we protect ourselves we protect the vulnerable and the innocent you know it's the guard at the gate that will not allow the castle to be taken <laughs> you know I mean so it is this very powerful uh 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 you're not coming you know you're not you're not stepping on me <laughs> you're not pushing me I am I am in my truth I am in my power I know myself and it's a little tricky because at this point Aries is kind of still in this unconscious realm we've got Pisces Aries is like we say impulse and then that comes through Taurus gets grounded and becomes you know materialized and, and physicalized 
it's not really until Gemini that there's kind of like a, oh, wait a minute, uh, let's think about that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so this is where you can kind of get into danger, right? This is where you can kind of get into, you know, not always honoring other people's boundaries. Conquering, pushing, taking instead of, you know, working with. You know, narcissism, just like being completely self-oriented. So Aries needs Libra. Libra needs Aries. And it is this relationship axis between Aries and Libra of how I be myself and I complement another and I'm complemented by my other, my partner. Partnership, we, you know, we complement and we build and we support each other. We don't smother, control, or direct each other. So we find this balance, and this is what this Sun in Libra is all about. It's relationship on an equal basis. But for now, I'm going to say the majority of humanity is still down where the scales are a little out of balance because we elect external authorities, <laughs> you know, we're still in a place of having, you know, uh, governments and institutions and religions and parents and whatever. I mean, we're, we're still in a place of having, you know, being told what success is, what... what... <laughs> Lost it, man. <laughs> the wind knocked... Oh, yeah, look at that. I cracked the screen again. This poor phone. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up, right? That's enough. I think you get the idea here. Yeah? And then, of course, Mercury retrograding in square to Pluto. I need to, you know, uh, th that's the third quarter square. I need to break out of. The third quarter square is breaking out of the consensus, breaking out of the conventional, and reaching higher, wider, broader for something more. And it comes into a creative tension, a kind of a block with that Pluto in Capricorn. Very powerful, right? You know, powerful authority figures that want to dominate our thinking and our controlling with our, you know, with their, with their, impress us with their reality. So, you know, this retrograde Mercury is going retrograde, I need to reflect on that a little bit and maybe I need to respond. Maybe I need to rebel. Maybe I need to re, 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 rethink, redo, re-speak, rewrite, <laughs> you know. But, you know, so there is this, you know, and I need to challenge, maybe prove myself to that Plutonian figure in my life. And the cool part about it is what? We got Venus square Jupiter at the same time. Now, Venus moving through Scorpio, this is a powerful goddess energy. Whoa! Let's tap into the powerful, feminine, emotional, spiritual sensitivities. And, 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 and unite and join together with Scorpio, the mysteries of life and death. We are all midwives. You know, we're all hospice workers. We're all giving birth to a new self. And we need to let go. Scorpio is about also letting go of the past, of who we were, of what we were in of what was maybe limiting us. So we're kind of all getting challenged now, whether it's financially or in our relationships, our intimate relationships, you know, within society, to like really heal this wound of the masculine, of this Mars. Because what we suppress becomes distorted and turns into anger. So if, if, if we are not really listening and honoring our truth, our instinct, our nature, we can walk around irritable, frustrated, and just kind of, you know, 
flip out once in a while, yeah? So the more that we ease this out and let it out a little bit at a time, I see the wind is coming up. <laughs> yeah, right? So, right? My power to stand, ask for and be what I am has been wounded through time. The sooner I honor and speak my truth, the sooner I'll get what is mine. As sure as the sun is going to shine, we will get our share of what is mine. <laughs> and the hotter they come, the hotter they fall, one and all. Namaste. Aloha. So much love. Ow! <laughs>